I ain't even finna cap. I became very unstable. Uh, guys, I'm I'm losing my shit over here. This is gonna be my end of year awards. 8,000 responses. Thank you guys for the 8,000 res responses. 8,000 responders. I created 10 categories and I asked you guys on Instagram uh, who I should nominate. If you're even thinking about blaming me for the result, don't get angry at me. I may have slipped in a couple of myself, such as uh, Shredmaster Keith uh, for the Fake Steez Award, but mostly uh, it's it's you guys, not me. I'm drinking cold curing coffee. It smells like battery acid, and it tastes like... <laughs> I'm gonna go through these. I'm not gonna spend too much time on each one, but I just wanna say also, thanks guys for a great year. It's been pretty much a year of me on YouTube now. I can't wait until you guys fucking are sick of me, and, and I, I can and do a normal job. Just let me know when you guys want me to do something else and I'll stop making videos. With the least amount of votes for the uh, Fake Steez Award is Chris Pullman, who if you don't know, he's the old fart that thinks he's Dylan Reader. <laughs> I don't know. I just put him on here to fuck with you guys because he's so beloved on on Instagram. Next is uh, Deeds, who I definitely put on here to piss you guys off. Kids love Deeds, so I knew that they people would be super upset if I put Deeds on here. Someone put in the comments L take. A lot of the time, I think Zoomers are pretty funny, but they just put like L or W in front of something and think that's a sick insult. <laughs> L take. Yeah, shut the fuck up, dude. Uh, eat your cinnamon toast crunch and watch your deeds videos. Uh, that guy is a fucking avocado for a graphic. Get out of my fucking face. <laughs> okay, this is my vote every single year. Cody McIntyre. Every year, Cody McIntyre should win Fake Steez Award. And it seems like there was some confusion about this. Um, let's just take a little brief look at Cody McIntyre's Instagram page, because he's an Instagram skater now. Just uploads this fire Euro gap session. Look at his haircut. He looks like an exotic bird. It's that kickflip. Did you guys see that dumbass shifty kickflip thing? Killing it in Pflugerville. What are you smoking? Yeah, put that shit in slow motion, brother. He's such a tryhard, dude. Look at this combo. Yeah, just go into manual off that. That's really sick. Hey, who knows? Maybe he has something dope up his sleeve for the end here. Oh, front board. My vote every single year is uh is Cody Mack. Mark Suchu, I put him on here because of that stupid thing he does off the curb. Man, I'm so sick of that. Please, Mark. I know you're probably never gonna release footage again because you one sody. I don't really care. Uh, as long as you never do that thing off the curb again. Shredmaster Keith. <laughs> I think Shredmaster Keith is a pretty good skateboarder. And I, you know, he's got it. He's got a nice style. Um, I'm always skeptical of people whose like entire style is like flooded pants and like skating park really well. It's like, okay, dude, uh, obviously you, you, you have a good style at LES, like you skate there every single fucking day. Um, of course, you're skating it smooth. You know where every single crack, the exact angle of every single transition, um, the patterns of every single scooter kit. Of course, you're going to look good there. Uh, when you skate a park every single day, it's pretty hard to look bad. So I'm like, dude, if you're actually that smooth, Shredmaster Keith, drop some street footage. You're like, you're a good enough skater to do it. Just do it. And then Jagger eaten on flat one by a landslide because I made a video making fun of his fucking Harry Potter ass casting spell flat ground game. Should we be creating these super skaters like in labs from a young age? If this was the result, if like this, I've never seen so much fucking drama before a kickflip. If that's what happens, uh, then no, we should not be training contest skaters from a young age because it looks like shit. It's not worth it. It doesn't matter how high level he is. If it, if it looks like that, no more, please. Okay, trick of the year. Trick of the year in last place, Michael Paluzzi. Paluzzi? Is it Paluzzi? Michael Paluzzi with a board slide pop board slide, which I like that clip. That clip was fucking dope. Michael Paluzzi's like a borderline fancy lad type of guy. I'm just glad that he did something besides flat bar to manual off a curb. Okay, then Milton Martinez, who jumped off of a building as predicted by me earlier this year and then landed into a bank. I drove past this spot almost every day as a kid on my way to school, and I always wondered if anybody was going to do it. So uh, thanks, Milton, for fulfilling my childhood fantasies. Mwah. Next, we have Kyoto with the Willy Grind. This tells you about the current state of affairs in skateboarding, where when somebody jumps off the side of a building into a massive brick bank, uh, the, the audience is like, okay, that was pretty sick, but remember when Kyoto did a Willy Grind? Uh, that was that was better. <laughs> ben Kato. 
uh, with a 50-50 like cancel flip thing. I put that on here because I thought it was sick. I don't think anybody suggested that. More people were suggesting the the Smith Grind Melon, which I thought was also sick. Both of those are like equally cool in my opinion. Chris Roberts switch flip manual. How the fuck did this get in here? I think somebody at the Nine Club hacked my computer. Miraculously coming in third place. <laughs> the third best trick of the year was a trick that was not done this year. Well done, Chris. Okay, second place, Trung Nguyen with the Dark Slide. Personally, my favorite trick of the year, um, but I'm a huge Trung Nguyen fanboy. Uh, loved his part in the Respectfully video. To me, that was a perfect trick, but I'm also not upset that Jack O'Grady got first place with his 50-50 to 50-50 grind. Hard to beat. I mean, everything about that clip was spectacular. C can't be mad at that. So well done, Jack O'Grady, for winning Trick of the Year. Mmm. <laughs> Worst song of the year. In last place, John Delo with Red Tiger. You guys are so full of shit, by the way. So many people suggested this one. And in, in, on Instagram, everyone hated the fact that he used the Pink Panther theme. I thought it was sick. I thought it like made a lot of sense too with, with John Delo's style. I thought it really complemented the pacing uh, of his skating. I thought it was a good choice and it like fit the theme of the Red Tiger thing that I guess John Delo's going with this year. I, I put in parentheses that I like I liked it and I think that swayed a lot of you guys because the amount of people that suggested it on Instagram was way more than 5%. But yeah, I like that song a lot. Entire chocolate video. <sighs> This shit was just boring as fuck. I'm sorry. Oh, look, I spelled video wrong. V-L-D-E-O. Yeah, the only part that was cool was when Chris Roberts did the slappy. More Chris Roberts slappy footage, please. And then I put the entire America this video. This whole video was just felt like really monotonous to me. And for the soundtrack, uh, it seems like they just went up to some random garage in the suburbs and like stuck a microphone underneath the garage door while some kids were having band practice for 40 minutes and then use that. In my opinion, I America needs to like reinvent themselves a little bit. Uh, I like Spanky's part, that slappy he did up a literal wall. <laughs> I, I don't know how he does that. I also liked Figgy doing like fucking nose picks and stuff. But yeah, most, most of that video I wasn't really a big fan of. It just like, I feel like America needs to change up their their image a little bit just my opinion but there you go second place yuto horigome fly shit only by future i i talked about this at length in my sodi video i just felt like this shit was way too commercialized with the jordan fits and the future song and the really like blown out spots it just all seemed like uninspired choices all around in my opinion uh there you go it got 500,000 views so i suppose it was supposed to it did what it was supposed to do even the balclava trick at the end like even though it was gnarly as fuck it felt like manufactured i put that on here it seems like a lot of you guys agreed but of course you all watch my videos and when i do when i talk about it in a video you all just fucking <laughs> listen to me for some reason but of course i knew this was gonna win also this just dropped <laughs> ryan desenzo two banging songs uh in his part here in his 1990 part which respect to ryan desenzo came out with two insane <laughs> video parts this year the skating itself is really high level and impressive but everything else about it is like kind of fucked he chose like some low budget Canadian rap songs, I think. My favorite line in the second one was when it comes to hoes, we the trending topic. If you ain't getting money, don't roll with us. If you ain't getting money, don't roll with us. Okay, dude, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, <laughs> it's so fucking bad. My theory about Ryan Desenzo is like he's an extremely talented skateboarder, but with the skateboarding IQ of a 12 year old. If I was 12 years old and I had the skill level that Ryan Desenzo had, I think I would have come out with a nearly identical video part to this 1991 music selection and trick selection, everything. Well-deserved win from, from Ryan Desenzo. Those songs were so fucking bad, I almost actually kind of enjoyed it. I respect Ryan Desenzo because he's an old too. He's 35 years old and he's he's fully sending it. Best TikTok account? Um, see, the problem with this one is I put a lot of these guys in here and I don't think you guys have any idea who most of these are. So you guys just voted for the names that you recognize, like Mikey Taylor, who's doing some dank investment financial advice shit on his TikTok. Breaking down the Island Boys investments and how they're going about building their brand. I don't know the Island Boys' actual investments. Um, and then Joey Brzezinski uploading some banging burrito TikToks. And then the, okay, welcome to Redland Skate Park, pussy. Okay. Welcome to Redland Skate Park.
gay park, pussy. Okay. And you guys voted for him because I did a video about him. So here's what I'm going to do to honor the TikTokers because some of them were in the comments of my post like, please vote for me. Please, please, please may I have a vote. Please. Uh, I know that you don't want to win this category, guys. Just, just so you know, this is not an honorable category to win. I respect the TikTok hustle. I was hustling TikTok myself at one point. If the dog is looking at me, I'll take a shot. Blue cap. <laughs> I, I get what it's like. I get it. Congratulations to Skate, uh, Mr. Grizzly Grip. I think he has a deal with the Nelk Boys or something. Sometimes people think that if I make fun of something, I don't want it to exist. Dude, I fucking, I love this shit. Uh, I would be nothing without people like the Skate guy. So thank you, Skate guy. And uh, congratulations on your, on your win here. Please clap. Well deserved. Okay best fit category um and i sort of did a little mix and match of uh sincere and insincere nominees in last place kareem calendar who was in the limo video who tucked his pants into a red sock and i thought that was really cool <laughs> so i put him on here then we got nija on christmas quick shout out to nija for just being my content cow of the year nobody has come through in the clutch for me week after week like nija has so just quick thank you to nija for 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 keeping the lights on you know i was actually i was in san clemente yesterday and it was raining and i wanted to skate with nelly and i was like uh, nija's park was like somewhere i was like they, we were talking about hopefully we could go and i was like i wonder if he like saw me if he would knew who i was or if he would be like pissed but either way, I didn't end up getting to go. But Nigel, if you want to skate sexy pajamas, Nigel always likes to sprinkle in the right amount of sexy into his outfits. Merry Christmas. Let me get some ETH. Man, please have some ETH. Please. I'm struggling here. E-money, please. Barely paying off the mansion. Nothing under the tree. Nija doesn't need shit. No, f no physical possessions. He's got his NFTs and he's got his ETH. Love this fit though from the jaw. He looks so comfortable. Then we got Evan Mock at the Met Gala who wore like some weird hybrid leather fetish thing that I personally I wasn't fucking with. Then John Shanahan, who's sort of like, I half like it and I half don't like it. The DC shoes and the capris, lower half of his body is like a kind of fat kid that maybe plays too much Xbox Live. Like it seems like he's hiding cankles under there. Uh, I respect him for, for changing it up, doing something different. Fourth place, George Poulos, uh, who dresses like Nigel Thornberry, need I say more. Third place, Nigel with the Gucci suit. This was a, a classic one and I already covered it, but fucking Austin Powers, Nigel outfit. Deserving of, of third place, I'll say wow nija cleaning house in the fit category with <laughs> pirate jaw winning second place this was an all-time classic mainly due i think to the ambiguity of it where it's like pirate jaw but he sort of looked like a sexy fairy kind of didn't really get much pirate vibes from it it was just sort of like a nondescript black outfit with like wings and a cape <laughs> love that outfit pirate jaw for the win <laughs> Unironic entry though, Trung Nguyen. Glad that Trung took home the first place. The master of Normcore definitely deserves best fit of, of the year. Like, it's I, I if I saw Trung Nguyen on the street and I didn't know who he was, I'd be like, is this guy like, is does he have somewhere to stay or is he just like some self-aware guy glad you took home a gold medal this year and i hope element is still sending you boards brother the few industry connects that i do have i'm plugging you trunk hey you heard of trunk new dude that guy needs some uh some kind of fucking contract worst trick of the year in last place clive dixon butt crack trick um and this was a this trick was amazing clive dixon is a really good skater but his belt raised above his jeans and it left this like triangular space in between run that back there freeze that hold on a second i'll enhance I guess that's what adds to the charm of Clive Dixon as he fucking tosses a, a butt crack clip in there. I thought this one was going to be higher up on here, but Ace Pelka with his one foot grind of pain, that shit was so fucking bad. I'm sorry. In my opinion, that was the worst trick of the year. Taking yourself seriously, doing that ride on one footed grind, uh, Ace Pelka's fucking fried. I'm sorry.
<laughs> that was so bad. The frustrating thing about Ace Pelka is he's like 50% amazing and 50% fucking terrible. He's a coach like, no, Ace, we're not doing one-footed ride on grinds today. No. In third place, we got Ryan Desenzo with the double trash can stacked frontside 180. Of all tricks, he does a frontside 180 over it. If you weren't buying into my theory of like Ryan Desenzo is a 12-year-old trapped in the body of a 35-year-old, <laughs> then I think this clip proves it. I literally used to jump over trash cans in my front yard for fun. Bruh. The 12-year-old me relates to Ryan Desenzo skating really hard. To take the time to like stack two like full trash cans. Okay. In second place, you got the nose manual 540 shove it guy. You know, this this clip was bad, but it's like he's just a regular guy, I think. I don't think he's like a pro skater or anything. So um, although the clip was heinous, I don't think that he should be held to the same standard as the rest of these dudes. I threw him on here because that clip was very epic. 1,171 votes for this dude. And then in first place... The Sean Davis flip. That's two Battle at the Barracks clips uh, taking uh, first place in a category. You don't remember Sean Davis with his infamous uh, pretend shove it thing. <laughs> he stole the show 50% of the vote here. I'm going to say going forward after this, we just leave Sean Davis alone. I think that he has endured plenty of punishment and suffering this year. Um, and I wish him the best in the year 2022. I hope he turns it around. I think he's got a street part in the works. I hope it's epic. I hope it's really good. I hope it's excellent. Um, I do feel kind of bad because I think Sean Davis got cyber bullied the worst out of anybody this year. And he's not like a big enough skater where he can just sort of like turn it off or it's like it's obviously getting to him. So, you know, for, for my participation in that, I do apologize, Sean Davis. I didn't mean for it to snowball out of control the way that it did. If winning this worst trick category means anything to you, then uh, I hope you take that as consolation. This is a good category. Uh, least productive professional skateboarder. In last place, Evan Mock. Uh, well, I guess you could say he's doing Gossip Girl, so... He is uh, at least somewhat productive. It's hard to know whether you can hold Evan Mock to the same standard as everybody else because he's just a hot guy that's good at skating. And, like, he's sort of a transition skater. So you're like, do we – is he supposed to have a part? Do we give him the scapegoat treatment? Or do we sort of just, like, leave him alone because he's sexy? In the skateboarding sense, he doesn't seem terribly productive. In the general life sense, he seems extremely productive. Then we got Chaz Ortiz, uh, who – I don't know what Chaz Ortiz does anymore. Uh, since he stopped skating in Street League, uh, he's just, just like a fucking – ghost seems like he gets into internet beefs i think he was beefing with the nine-year-old that's a street league god i think he was pissed off with her at some point so yeah Chaz ortiz beefing with with literal children in third place sean pablo kind of a tragic one every single year it feels like sort of the same thing where it's like dude where's the fucking footage i guess like it seems like he doesn't like skating that much i think it would just be like a shame if in 10 years time you like look back at sean pablo's career and you're like the talent level that sean pablo has versus like his productivity i think there's a huge separation between the two things i know not everybody likes his skating like some people like accuse him of having a limited bag of tricks but i don't really give a shit about that like i just i really appreciate sean pablo's skating they need somebody at fa slash hockey to start whipping everybody into shape chris roberts in in second place i just kept tossing chris roberts in here he's busy with his podcast guys he is being productive and he did have that one slappy clip in the chocolate video are you, are they not recording? Are you recording, first place you saw this coming landslide victory with 53.6 percent of the the voting 4,000 votes kevin bradley some people accuse kevin bradley of being a hypocrite for shit talking mark suchu um, while not putting out any clips, but I say, you know what, if Kevin Bradley decided to take the year off of skateboarding to, uh, to focus on his true passion of, of drinking Aperol spritz, I can't tell, like, what was better for Kevin Bradley's career was being, like, not posting any footage and talking a bunch of shit, or if he actually put out footage, because it seems like he's being talked about more for not doing anything than if he were to just sort of behave himself as a regular professional skateboarder. Best video overall category, uh, Etienne and Dustin in the uh, edit they put out, which was really good. One of my favorite video parts of the year. Excellent video. If you didn't watch this one, definitely give it a look. Then we got the Ruben, 8.7%. Then uh, we got Chase Walker's Respectfully video, which had uh, Trung Nguyen's video part in it, but I like this entire thing. And then Evan and Frankie in, in, in the Frog video. I really like both of these guys. I think 
Frankie is like sort of underrated. Uh, in my opinion, he should be pro. I hope he turns pro next year. I think he fully deserves it. Jesse Alba is just eating into Frog's budget. We used to make fun of my friend Johnny. He was a personal assistant uh, for this celebrity. A lot of the time he wouldn't do anything. He'd just be on his phone, like on Discord. We'd say to Johnny, he was paid to chill. That's pretty much Jesse Alba. What the dog doing? In fact, I think I fucked up pretty heavily not putting Jesse Alba on this least productive pro list. <laughs> he should have been on there. Sorry about that. Palace video. I don't really care about Palace. Limousine, Paymaster in second place. Great video. Huge fan of Logan Lara. Obviously, I'm biased. Max Palmer is my favorite skater. I love this video. I was really excited for this video. I waited all year for it. Very happy. But I'm also kind of equally happy that uh, Death Wish Uncrossed won because I think the fact that this video sort of came out in the beginning of the year, it came out January 30th, I think. It sort of flew under the radar. I didn't see Pedro Delfino or Kirby get uh, nominated for Sodi or anything. This was an excellent video, and though I didn't like think it was as, as tasteful or didn't appeal to my sensitivities in the same way that the limousine video did, um, the just the sheer like level of skateboarding like as a full length... Uh, I think Death Wish Uncrossed was pretty fucking good. Jamie Foy as well. Everybody in that video deserves like <laughs> whatever tiny bit of recognition my end of year awards video grants them. My personal favorite category, of course, uh, only three, three nominations here uh, in last place. Hater of the year, Joey Brzezinski. I'm referring to Joey when he got white boy wasted at a Wu-Tang Clan concert. Too many white claws, uh, some hyphy rap music got Joey in his feelings, and he started c cussing out Jason Dill <laughs> into his iPhone, and then Paul Hart of all people blog <laughs> popped up behind him. <laughs> yeah, fuck Jason Dill! Yo, fuck you, Dill! Where you at with your fake ass company, F.A.? Uh, that video was classic. That was one of my favorite things to happen this year. Kevin Bradley in second place. He was the one who ignited the anti-Mark Suchu fire. Don't forget that, guys. He, he had a hot take and it caught on. He was kind of the one who said something that everybody was afraid to say. I think he said, Mark Suchu has the worst style in all of skateboarding. <laughs> I respect it. This is my list. I nominated myself. I got 55% of the vote, but I'm just going to step down and I'm going to give it to, to Kevin Bradley because... Personally, I, I think he deserves it. Taking hater of the year and least productive skater of the year. Two categories for Kevin Bradley. That's an impressive showing. <laughs> nice work, KB. Last one. We're going to get through this. The real skater of the year. I kind of took Mark Suchu off here. He already won the real Thrasher. People on Instagram were like, sorry, but it's still Mark. It's like, okay, whatever. Well, this is my list, bitch. Last place, we got Crazy Frankie. I put him on here. I think he's underrated. Turn Crazy Frankie pro. Then we got uh, Fred Gall, who I put on here to like appease all the fucking old heads. Like, Fred Gall, my Sodi, king of the crust. Okay, there you go. Skater of the year or like scammer of the year? Bruh, bruh, bruh. <laughs> Jeff Deschars? I, I honestly have no idea how to pronounce my king's last name. That's why I always refer to him as Jeff Wansong. I put him on here because I respect Jeff. He's a one of one. He's a unique skater. He doesn't let the haters get to him at all. He just does fucking quadruple under reverse cancel pressure flips down 11 stairs and releases it he's dope um i think we can all learn a little something from jeff thrasher it's time to sack up put jeff skating on the thrasher website he doesn't deserve to be fucking having his video parts distributed through the barracks deshaun jordan he suffers the uh unfortunate treatment of like being a contest skater but also an exceptionally talented street skater as well so i think people are naturally bias against him but i put him on here because like i'm a big fan of his skating and i i think that he's like weirdly kind of underrated john delo in fourth place john had a great year I, I also i stand by the decision to use uh red tiger for the video part yeah john I, you didn't have to release that much footage this year by the way fucking i hope you take an ice bath brother okay trung nguyen in third place my favorite part of the year uh unquestionably my first reaction to this like my mind was absolutely blown i think if you type in on youtube you can find me like watching this for the first time on stream and i was actually like blown away by it music the skating the whole thing uh, i loved it it appealed to all my sensibilities as a dumbass hipster very very sick part in second place jack o'grady almost getting first it's is literally a toss-up here between uh jack o'grady 
and Max Palmer. The people's champ, obviously, you saw this coming. Everybody fucking loves Max, but it was very close. The Australians almost clinched it. You deserve it, my favorite skater. Please clap. Sorry for rushing the end of that video, guys. Uh, the truth is that I really had to shit. So I just went fast, and I had already recorded it like five times. All right, guys, that's gonna do it. Out of here, and go to the... <laughs>